Um, in the first lecture, we played this game to call two thirds of the average game. Basically, everyone is choosing an integer between zero and a hundred, and you want to get as close to two thirds of the average of all the number that's chosen as possible. So. The result is like this. So in the morning, there are more people, but we have a higher average. It's around 44. And in the afternoon, there are less people, and the average is a bit below 40. And two-thirds of the average, correspondingly, are 30 and around 25. So as I said in class, the first thing to notice is that anyone who chose a number that's larger than 66 is not right. Because in order for that to happen, we need everyone else be choosing at 100 or even higher. So that's basically impossible to happen. There are actually a few people who chose exactly 66, which you are actually assuming everyone else is choosing 100. That's not a reasonable assumption, obviously. So and the interesting part, yeah, so there's one thing I want to mention. In the morning, there are a lot of people who chose 50. Um, I think they misunderstand the question. It's asking for the two-thirds of the average, not just the average. But in any case, in both class, there are a bunch of people who chose something around 33, which is good, because the logic of 33 is basically you're assuming everyone else is choosing randomly. So the average would be, say, around 50 if everyone else is choosing randomly. And you do two-thirds of that, which is approximately 33. So the problem with that, that thinking, and actually this is the reason why you take the second half of 206, is that when you are thinking about games, you don't think that other people are doing things that are random. You always consider that other people are optimizing just like you. So that's the main idea. That's the actually one of the most important points of 206, the second half of it. Um, so if you think like that, basically you assume everyone else it's not op optimizing, so and only you are optimizing, so you choose two sorts of that. But the problem is everyone else should be thinking like that as well. So then comes a second group of people who chose something around 22. So what 22 is, is it's two thirds of 33 is 22. So they basically think about this in two levels. Basically, you assume everyone else is thinking like this. So you're assuming that everyone else is assuming everyone else is choosing randomly, and you best respond to those people. So that's one level better. That's still not perfect, but that's that's very close to the actual. Say, so see, 22 is very close to the, these actual numbers. What this means is, basically, on average, people should think twice so in two levels basically you best respond to other people best respond to other people just choosing randomly so so it's actually good to see those people choosing this of course in both class there are people who chose number that's a very close to zero I think they know that is the Nash equilibrium as I said in class I will talk about Nash equilibrium later so zero actually zero and one are the only Nash equilibrium so but we don't need to know it now. When we do game theory, we'll actually solve this game. And both class actually play this the second time. It gets a lot better. So the morning class actually reached a lower average. That's very surprising. It's less than 24. This is a bit more than 24. So, but it's around the same. So, so basically, there are a group of people who chose exactly zero. You, what you are assuming is everyone else is perfectly rational. That's not really a good assumption because you see, in, there are people who are still choosing really bad numbers for some reason. As I said in class, I know who they are, so I'll talk to them. But in any, anyway, in any case, you, you never want to assume that other people are perfectly rational. So there are a bunch of people who chose something in between. They chose something that's less than what they did in the first round, and but still not exactly zero. So I think that's a good behavior. That's learning from what we did in the first round. So it's a good thing. So as I promised, we will go over this in next next week's lecture. And before that lecture, of course, we will play this again to see if we can get something even closer to zero. 
So um, I will stop here. See you next week.